Welcome back to Shem's Universe. So guys, I'm driving today. You saw my short already. I'm driving, so that's how it goes some days, man. Anyways, let's get right to this. Taurus Sun, new chapter. So the Taurus Sun, to start off with, is a good energy to have to a certain extent. When we look at it from a Western astrologer standpoint, remember I'm speaking as a professional, meaning I'm bridging the communication of the intellect from the Western to the Eastern, differentiating between the two. The Western Taurus fixed sign uh, represented by Venus, very fixated, very stubborn, uh, very materialistic, very sensual because of the energy of Venus and it gives them good luck in material matters because they run the second house, which is your relation to money, okay? Same sort of concept in the Eastern astrology, the side real astrology, uh, very sensual, but Venus and the sun don't get along. So this sun sign position depends on your disposition. It will depend if it's gonna be work that good for you. Uh, a couple notable differences that they do discuss in side reel that I really, really enjoyed and understood it completely. Um, of course, the dates are different. Um, it goes from approximately May 14th or 15th, debatably, to June 14th or 15th. I put up a post regarding the side reel astrology dates as well, so you guys know that. Um, and with that being said, the Taurus has to work so much by themselves and climb and get to the top of that given hierarchy that they're in. So it's very, very different from the West where they don't, they just say, yeah, stable, very security oriented, uh, might want kids, all this, other stuff, all this other stuff. It's true, but at the same time, they don't touch on the things that Venus and the sun don't get along. So your sun sign, what you're meant to be, is gonna be more of a challenge compared to another sign like Aries that was like already in that leadership position and the sun's exalted. So that's the major difference. So now that we're discussing now, we have that understanding we can now delve into the moon sign of Aries. Moon sign Aries is very much about being um, very, very, um, I would say very commanding, very enterprising. This is your mindset, this is your thought patterns. It makes you somebody that's able to take control of situations, take on leadership positions, and you do not shy away from confrontation. This is very, very good. When I look at it from when they're together, I mean, Taurus, Sun, Aries, Moon, it goes to the 12th and second disposition. So what this means is the 12th house is um, a negative house, it's malefic, it's the house of attachment, spirituality. The second house is materialism. People with these dispositions, usually they're not that attached to money, so they get a lot of it. Because the 12th disposition with their Taurus makes them very, very um, relaxed with money, very much um, enterprising and commanding and ambitious and driven, but they don't really like need the status or money for their fulfillment of self. They already have that filled because they have a positive thought pattern through Aries. So Aries now has that commanding presence, gives you that sort of uh, my way or the highway mentality. And when Aries and Taurus get together, like in this, in this piece, excuse me, in these positions, they become friends. So it's actually a friendly combination, which makes it so your mind and your gut instinctual feelings are in align, alignment with one another. So that makes it a lot easier to actually get things done, to not doubt yourself, to be an entrepreneur, to get into things like politics, to get into things like military practices, just to do anything independently. You won't have that war with the self the way other signs might. Like when we get to like Taurus and Scorpio Moon, we're gonna notice a very big difference, okay? So this is a very cohesive and very good mixture and combination. It makes you a very stable, nurtured person because of Taurus, but also very enterprising because of the cardinal energy of Aries. So you don't get too comfy, you don't get too lazy and lethargic the way Taurus can notoriously do that when they're around a lot of luxury. Aries makes you step forward into life and keep getting more and more. But you're very spiritually inclined and you're also quite humble about it. So that's what makes you get even more from the universe because you're detached from the material things that you have and you're very, very giving. So it works out. Downsides, of course, people might find you a bit um, extreme. Uh, Aries moon have a way of being very commanding, having a very strong aura, and that confidence that you exude can sometimes intimidate lesser energy. So you just gotta be very, very careful with that and know how to act, what face to show with different sets of people. I'm not saying be fake, but if you're in a business setting, you don't wanna outshine the master. You read 48 laws of power, you'll learn that. If you're in a friendship setting, yeah, you can be yourself. Your friends should like you for you. If not, F them. And that's just simply how it is. You're in a relationship, you don't wanna be overly commanding to the point where your partner feels offended like you're trying to control their life. So these things are just common sense. This video is gonna be a little bit longer than the rest of this chapter because I had to break down the Taurus sun first. You guys understood it completely in the side real astrology. And I will be breaking it down uh, more throughout the, the chapter, but this is the major synopsis of what Taurus sun sign looks like. And that's the mixture with the Aries. If you guys have any questions for me whatsoever, 
please leave it down in the comment section. Aside from that, like, subscribe, follow me to today, guys. Peace.